Scorpion of Fucus, welcome to your 2021 yearly sidereal astrology horoscope. All right, so a lot going on this year. We're going to take a look at the most important areas for you in terms of development. Uh, what is this uh, current year really emphasizing and how to work with these different areas in constructive and healthy ways. So again, this channel, you know, is for sidereal astrology, which is different from mainstream astrology. So if you are new to this form of astrology, definitely check out the link down below because your sign does change and you want to make sure you're watching this for your true sidereal sign. Down below is a, a list of sun sign dates where you can find your true sidereal uh, sun sign and also a birth chart calculator for calculating your uh, sidereal ascendant and your sidereal moon sign. Um, if you do want to watch all three, in fact, I do recommend it. Um, your sun, moon and ascendant videos will give you a more personalized reading and a more kind of holistic view of the year for you personally, since these uh, videos are a little bit more collective for all Scorpios and Afucuses in this case. All right, so most important thing for this year, we have Saturn and Jupiter changing signs. In fact, that'll be happening in December coming into the new year. And they're going into your very practical sector, uh, the third house, which deals with essentially gaining knowledge and information. I think it's gonna be a very constructive year for all things that might involve learning, particularly about practical things, practical knowledge, maybe uh, technical skills, and also developing your communication. It can sometimes be kind of a social area where it's good to connect with our peers or our neighbors, uh, even our siblings, if you have siblings, and sort of exchange and communicate and share with others. Uh, but it can be very private as well. You know, maybe writing, you can be sharing your ideas that way. For those of you who've ever been inspired to write, it could be a very constructive year for that as well. But it is essentially about gaining and sharing knowledge and information um, and any intentions you set around that for the year, I think will be very constructive with both of these planets here. Now, January 10th, Mars will leave Pisces where he's been this whole second half of 2020, which uh, creates a lot of has created a lot of uncertainty about where we're putting our energy and action. But it starts to move forward January 10th. And for you, I think a lot of it will be in the developments of your work and also your routines like health, perhaps. So your day to day activities, I think, get the sense of fire. Uh, great to be motivated, put some intention into your work, into your routines, into your health, kicking off the year. But this has already been, I think, a very important area for change because these past two years, you've had Uranus here, which is all about experimentation. And really what's been unfolding and will be for the next few years <clears throat> is this whole idea of how can you have more freedom with your routine and freedom with your work and perhaps shape your routine and work life in such a way that it reflects more of your true self. So that's still gonna be an important emphasis this year. Um, and we could notice some things starting to move forward there, um, you know, right off the bat, January 10th with Mars entering your sixth house. Now, January 13th, we do have a new moon, which is really solidifying, I think, things from 2020, because I think in 2020, it was likely a very constructive year for a lot of you in regards to your inner and outer resources and your inner and outer abundance. A lot of you probably have gained a lot of awareness about what you're capable of, of what you can attract in terms of abundance and resources, probably a heightened sense of self-worth or self-value, more grounding there with your inner resources. Uh, but the new moon there will be a nice step in the right direction to just help you feel more empowered. You're probably coming into the year mid-January mid onwards uh, feeling a little bit more empowered with your self-value, self-worth, and probably ability to you know, attain resources and really ground that, what could be material or financial uh, or just natural resource uh, side of your life. Now, January 17th, we do have Jupiter squaring up to Uranus, which is really a very important aspect because Saturn will also be squaring Uranus throughout pretty much the whole year from February 17th all the way through December 24th. And so squares are challenging energy, right? Uh, it involves two very different areas of life that we're integrating. And for you, it's the two different areas we just talked about. While you have a lot of developments around learning and communication, and, and there's also these developments regarding your work and your routine, you know, these two areas are gonna be highly emphasized, but they're, they're hard to integrate. So I think it's great to be curious this year, be flexible, to learn, gain new information, new knowledge, 
uh, but also to again experiment with those routine structures right uh, maybe changes at work uh, something that leads to more freedom maybe some changes with your health or routines uh, leads to more freedom so the real idea here is how to integrate these two very different er areas i would say one great way of doing this is to incorporate some of that mental energy into maybe studying about things that could end up helping your work or helping your career like practical knowledge and stuff and such maybe challenging yourself with communication at work um, and then also just uh, maybe connecting with your peers at work if you do have a more community or uh, where you have you know co-workers and things like this um, sharing ideas there and communicating developing those communication skills at work so it's all about creating more flexibility this year and I think with that willingness to learn, I think is great. And that willingness to create new routine structures and habits, I think is also great. Um, and this square will really help you develop both of these areas. Now, late February, going into early March, we do have Neptune changing sign going into your fifth house of romance, of kids, if you have kids of your creative self-expression, hobbies, interests, passions, all this gets a very spiritualizing energy. You might start to have some dreams or ideals about maybe doing something that you love or creating something that you love or spending time with those that you love. And so it's really good to follow those dreams and ideals um, in that context and um, see how everything will happen in divine timing. It can be a little bit confusing, although I don't think it will be that confusing with Neptune and Pisces, which is a very comfortable place for, for Neptune to be in. But um, if there is uncertainty about what is your passion, what is it you enjoy, what is it you love, it's all about turning inward and listening to your intuition and letting that guide you a little bit because over the next many years, it's going to be this almost serendipitous flow that uh, will be nice to connect to because life is saying there's something greater here involving your passion, involving what you love, involving your self-expression that we may not know tangibly what it is, but we can be guided towards it uh, on a soul and spiritual level. So really good to do that. <clears throat> now, this is also important because Neptune's leaving your home sector. So over the past 10 years, um, there was likely some uncertainty maybe um, around home. Uh, but uh, I think fundamentally, uh, in a sense, now that the, you know, now that Neptune's leaving, it's like the fog sort of lifts. And it's almost seen that everything serendipitously kind of worked out with your home or your personal life or family life. Even though there was maybe some being lost at sea kind of energy with that these past 10 years, now it's like we land at shore and we can see that you know, everything kind of serendipitously worked out for some of you, a dream come true, in fact, when it comes to your home, personal or family life. So anyways, at the very least, uh, there is that culmination that uh, less of that nebulousness around personal life uh, regarding that area. And now good to incorporate that spiritual approach to the self-expression. But there's also a nice boost in regards to the home and personal life, because on April 18th, Jupiter's going to dip into your fourth house between April 18th and August 29th. And you know, Jupiter is the planet of expansion. So some of you might start to get a bit optimistic about what you can do with your home. Some of you might be feeling a bit adventurous, uh, maybe traveling a bit for your home, maybe just starting to see the uh, opportunities that could arise. And there certainly could be opportunities throughout the year for your home and family life. So that's really good. And fundamentally, I think this is about learning a lot about your roots. Um, Jupiter gives us wisdom and the fourth house being our soul. Uh, lots of um, you know insights coming in about your roots, where you come from, your past, maybe your family that can give you a lot of important insights throughout the year. Now, April 21st to May 11th, we do have a lot of emphasis on your sixth house at this time in particular regarding the work and routine. So like we said, the whole year is good for experimenting with work and routine, but that could be particularly emphasized this later part of April into May um, in terms of those developments there. Now, May 26th and June 10th, we have the eclipses. And so really as the whole year, but maybe particularly this uh, May and June time, it is a good time of finding balance in your uh, relationship life, let's say. I think you're likely in a very independent time or there's some almost kind of um, patterns or uh, karmic patterns that are unfolding regarding independence right now. And it's good to be focused on self and all this. But the balance to that, I think, is really on relationships. And if there's new things you can explore for the whole year that involves maybe new relationships, maybe exploring new things there in those partnerships, personal or professional relationships, it's a great year for that because I think the year is about finding this balance between your independence 
in your relationship life, between your needs and your relationship needs. And anything that does walk that middle path between those two, I think will be very fruitful and help you kind of uh, strive towards that balance of seeing that these are two sides of life that we, we need both of. And so June 10th, May 30th with the eclipses will help shift that energy as well as the eclipses on November 19th and December 4th. Now, June 14th, uh, things make a little bit more sense in regards to what you're integrating with more flexibility, still learning, maybe developing your communication and um, again, experimenting with your routines and your work. So something there maybe makes a little bit more sense about how you can unite the two. Again, maybe technical skills you can be developing for your work, your communication skills, your relationships at work, uh, things of this nature. Uh, so something starts to make a little more sense there. And I think for the second half of the year, it's just a great time of implementing this, uh, you know, creating more flexibility and willingness to learn and share and exchange and, um, you know, pursue your uh, more freedom in your in your routine life. Now, August 29th, that's when Jupiter will come back into your third house. So between August 29th and December 7th, uh, that's really where your mind starts to expand again, like it was earlier in the year. And there could be a lot of insights coming in. Um, again, inspirations to learn or write, to essentially gain or share your knowledge or information. So again, fantastic year for that. November 19th, December 4th are those eclipses. Again, helping you find balance between self and other independence and relationships. And then December 7th, uh, Jupiter will come back into the home sector where he'll be going into 2022 to again help expand that area some more. So again, look out for any inspirations and opportunities that you might want to develop with your home life. It's good to be grounded with it with Jupiter, but uh, yeah, really uh, pay attention to your perspective about home because uh, it's our beliefs that really manifest our reality and Jupiter helps us become more aware of our perspective about an area. So expand your mind, be open-minded about home and personal life, and then ground it and implement it. Could be a great year for that stuff. All right, December 19th, something minor. Venus will be going retrograde for the rest of the year into 2022. This is going to be taking place in that second house. So regarding the finances or resource stuff, maybe good to kind of go back, revisit, redo some of those things, re-examine what your values are essentially and your material values. And that'll be good, again, to continue with any transformations that have been occurring there over the past many years. And then lastly, December 24th, Saturn will be squaring Uranus for the last time. And though I do think that 2022 and onwards will still be good for developing, again, learning and also your routines, um, you know, uh, gaining information and also your work. Um, I do think that that integration does come to some sort of culmination at that time with the last and final square. So likely more flexibility in your life, more willingness to learn, probably some development with your communication skills and a nice step in the right direction involving more freedom in your work and uh, with your routine and maybe some innovative things regarding your health that uh, could be also helpful. All right, so Scorpion and Fucus have a fantastic 2021. Now this video does come with a 20% discount on personal readings. Of course, we've just looked at things very generally for all Scorpion and Fucuses, but you do have your individual charts. So if you would like a specific year ahead look, definitely check out those links down below. But again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have an awesome year and I'll see you all next time for the next astrology forecast. Take care.